You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. We begin with new details in our breaking news. Four women recovering after being shot at a Midtown medical facility. A fifth shooting victim later died. And this triggered an eight-hour manhunt. Police found the accused gunman in a Cobb County neighborhood. We kicked off our team coverage with that portion. I'm Molly Oak outside the Fulton County Jail, where the suspect is this morning after an eight-hour search yesterday. Jail records show 24-year-old Deon Patterson is now facing four counts of aggravated assault and is accused of murder. Authorities took him into custody after he allegedly opened fire inside the 11th floor waiting room of Northside Medical Midtown just after 12 o'clock yesterday afternoon. 11 Alive learned the suspect served with the U.S. Coast Guard from July 2018 to January of this year when he was discharged. We also uncovered past criminal history, including when Henry County officers charged him three times as a teenager, once for a small amount of marijuana, twice for probation violations. We're still working to learn when Patterson's first appearance will be. Guys. The four women who were shot at Northside Medical Hospital are here at Grady Hospital this morning recovering. The fifth victim, she died at the scene. Her name was Amy St. Pierre. She was 39 years old. The other four victims were ages 71, 56, 39, and 25. Now, in the last update that we got from Grady Hospital officials, they tell us that those three victims were in critical condition and the other was still in the emergency department. One had just left the operating room and was doing well, and the most severely injured victim was just going into surgery. That was at the last update that we got from Grady Hospital. The fourth woman is in stable condition in the trauma center. Now, Grady's chief medical officer says that the women will now recover in ICU. He also went on to say that these women have a long road to recovery ahead of them. Back to you. Thinking of their families, Ariana, thank you. This morning, reaction is strong from our elected leaders. Let's get straight to 11 Lives' Jerry Carnes, who's been monitoring new statements coming in. Jerry? Good morning. Praise for law enforcement, cries for changes when it comes to our nation's gun laws. Reaction is coming from City Hall, the state capitol, and Washington, D.C. From the state capitol, Governor Brian Kemp issued a statement that says, in part, quote, we are heartbroken by the tragedy in Midtown Atlanta and join all Georgians in praying for those impacted and their loved ones. He went on to thank the law enforcement and officers involved in the response to the shooting. U.S. Senator John Ossoff is among the elected leaders calling for change. From the nation's capital, he issued a statement where he called the shooting horrific, an attack on all Georgians. Quote, the level of gun violence in America today is unconscionable and unacceptable. Let's hear now from Atlanta Mayor Andre Dickens and from Senator Raphael Warnock, who spoke from the floor of the U.S. Senate. This was a horrible act of gun violence. But equally horrifying is that we know that this is not unique in our country. And if we refuse to act while our children are dying, and in a moment when no one is safe, then shame on us. Atlanta City Councilman Amir Faroqi, who represents the area of Midtown where the shooting took place, says, quote, there are common sense solutions to reduce gun violence and we have to adopt them. Let's go now to Liza Lucas, who has reaction from neighbors who live and work in the area where the suspect was found. Now, relief this morning following a period of chaos for those living in Cobb's Waterford Place complex. That's where the manhunt ended. One of the residents telling 11 Alive they had a feeling that the neighborhood could indeed be the place Patterson was hiding out. We have a pool area with um, like um, showers and that they could get in there and hide. And I just thought that they might be hiding out until it got dark. Turns out Christy Colwell was right about that hunch. Check out what neighbors say happened shortly after alerting police. We start walking back and he, then he starts running and get your dogs, get on the grass, get on the grass. And we were like, oh my God. Again, the search for Patterson ended right in Christy and Deborah's backyard. The pair telling 11 Alive they are just grateful. No one was hurt as Patterson was taken into custody. Again, we are thinking of all the families and lives impacted. And this morning, we know parents in Metro Atlanta are hugging their children a little tighter this morning after that shooting in school lockdown. And having to send them back to school this morning. We've been seeing social media posts with parents reacting to their kids, reaching out during the lockdown. As you can imagine, it's scary for kids. It's scary for the greater com uh, community, too. Atlanta Public Schools sending out this reminder on social media yesterday, telling parents about the resources they have to talk to their kids about violence. The school district has this tip sheet right now on their website for ways that 
elementary, middle, and high school students can cope. They also mentioned counseling services and social workers that will be available. We've been tracking this story and all of its developments for you. We are going to continue to bring you the very latest updates as they come in from police, witnesses, and other officials. You can always find the newest information on 11alive.com. That was a look at your top headlines. All right, this is your pick of the week today, Chesley. Sure is, and uh, a day that you need to start off with your hoodie or sweater once again. We've got temperatures down into the 30s, as you can see, 40s out there as well, even some 50s around. In fact, you're at 43 degrees, McDonough, down toward Locust Grove, the same, 41 over toward Covington. You're at 39 degrees right now in the heart of Coweta County, and Noonan, 42, Peachtree City, 40 in Chattahoochee Hills, 40 in Dallas, over in Paulding County, but Hiram, not that far away, you're at 39, 38 in Temple, 44 in Marietta, you get close to the city. Obviously, temperatures are a little bit warmer there in downtown Atlanta right now, sitting at 50 degrees. Now, again, cool enough for a light sweater, but by this afternoon, you may just expose your short sleeves. 75 degrees for the afternoon high temperature. Very nice afternoon. The only difference is that right there. See that wind? It will be on the light side today as they begin to pick up. It's calm right now, but we'll pick up to about 10 miles per hour or less for this afternoon, so you'll feel all of that 75 today. You notice the clouds back off to the west is where we're going to have severe weather out to the Midwest uh, over toward uh, Dallas, Oklahoma City today. We'll be watching that. We'll weaken as it moves toward us, but we'll provide us with a threat for rain starting tomorrow. Today, high pressure still in our vicinity. Got that uh, wind out of the north today. Breeze. If, if you will, uh, out of the north today. But as that high pressure starts to move over toward the east, we get back into a southerly flow, and it's going to boost our temperatures up over the next couple of days. But our rain chance goes up as well. Now, it's a low threat, but it's a 20 to 30 percent chance starting tomorrow and will last through the weekend and into next week. I think much of next week will be unsettled for us. Here's how it all plays out. Forecast track model, it shows some high thin clouds out there right now. They go away and then more will come back to us as we head toward the evening. In fact, by the time we get to 8, 9 o'clock tonight, we'll start to notice those clouds starting to thicken up on us a little bit. You're waking up tomorrow morning to a mix of sun and clouds. Uh, I think the rain threat will be around once we get to the afternoon. 20% chance for an isolated shower too. Not all of us will see this, but a few of us may get a sprinkle or two. This will continue as we head into Saturday as well. The only difference is there in the afternoon, there could be a rumble of thunder or two. And so be on the lookout for that if you have outdoor plans, especially for Saturday. It'll be hit and miss with those showers. You also notice the temperatures will start to warm up as well. We go from 75 and 11 today, tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies, eight with a 20% chance for rain. Near 80 for the high temperature on Saturday. In fact, we'll hit 80 on Sunday, 20% chance for an isolated shower too. We'll give it an eight on the wisometer and we'll stay in those 80s as we head into next week. You'll get an 83 degrees on Monday, Tuesday, 85, 87 by the middle of next week on Wednesday. Again, with that 30% chance for rain continuing. Breaking news in Stone Mountain, a massive fire burning on Oxbow Road. It's a single story home. Firefighters have been battling this now for an hour. Two people were rescued without injuries, but just minutes ago, we confirmed that two firefighters have been taken to the hospital with minor injuries. We'll update you as we get more information in. Time now 656. Here's what's happening now. We are hearing from actor Jamie Foxx for the first time since he was hospitalized while filming a movie near Atlanta. Fox just posting on Instagram. Take a look at the message. It reads appreciate all the love feeling blessed. Fox was in Atlanta working on his new Netflix film back in action when he went to the hospital April 11th. He experienced a medical complication, but no specifics have been made public. We are learning more about the young man shot and killed on the platform of an East Point Marta station on Sunday. Jalen Major was a sophomore at Tri-Cities High School. He was 16. His accused shooter was only 15 years old. Last night, a vigil was held in East Point to honor the teen. His family is now trying to raise money to help pay for his funeral. If you would like to donate, we do have a link on 11alive.com. The next steps in the battle over Canton Street and Roswell are playing out. Roswell City leaders considering closing part of the busy street because of vehicle traffic. This morning, more people coming forward saying they're not on board. The city says the closure would impact about 200 feet of Canton Street from Elizabeth Way to East Valley. It is a trial that will last from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Today, an impressive team of kids getting ready for their state track meet. 69 kids from Douglas County have qualified for the Georgia Parks and Rec State Meet in Augusta. They compete Friday and Saturday, the biggest group in more than 10 years, ages 7 to 14. Best of luck. Glad to end the show on a good note yeah. today. It has been a busy 18 hours for In the News. We're going to keep following the developing story on the mass shooting in Midtown for you throughout the day. Yeah, we'll keep updating 11alive.com. For now, we'll hand it off to the Today Show and see you back here tomorrow morning.